This is the Will Kane Podcast on ESPN Radio. You know, I think we might as well call what happened yesterday on the East Coast Hurricane QBR. Weather, a downpour, wind, just crushing quarterback stats across the league. Look, I'm not making excuses for Dak. I'm talking to you about the GOAT. I'm talking to you about Tom Brady. But that's not all. I'm talking to you about Russell Wilson. And I'm even talking to you about Carson Wentz. There may be regrets in NFL contract land, but it shouldn't be about Carson Wentz, and it shouldn't be about yesterday. That's coming up a little bit on the Will Kane Show on ESPN Radio, presented by Progressive Insurance. And all guests are at 888-729-3776 on the Shell Pennzoil performance line. Was it? It wasn't. I'm not going to even ask, was it tripping? No, it wasn't tripping. Come on. I'm sitting around last night, and I get a text that says, you have to talk to John Perry. You have to talk to ESPN's Monday Night Football Rules Analyst, and you have to hear about whether or not this was tripping. And lucky for me, John Perry, our rules analyst, is on the Shell Pinzo performance line. John, we apparently have a mutual friend that said, I am not going to be happy after I talk to you. <laughs> I heard you may be a little bit disappointed today. Here's the thing. I didn't know which way you were going to play this. When I got that text, John, and I don't think he'll mind, it was uh, the voice of Monday Night Football, it was Joe Tessitore who said, you got to talk to John Perry. I didn't know which way you'd go, man. After listening to Mike Pereira on the Fox broadcast, I thought, I'm always up for being tweaked. I'm always up for getting my my anger you know, inflamed. But I didn't know if that meant John Perry telling me it was a bad call or actually trying to tell me like Mike Pereira did. Those tripping calls were actually good calls. So which way is it, John? Well, let's start with the second one. You know, you get inside two minutes. It's a tight game. They have fought for two hours and 55 minutes. It's going down to one drive. At the two-minute break, as a crew chief, you get together with your troops and say, listen, We've worked a good game. If you're going to interject yourself, make it huge. Let the players determine the outcome of this football game. The second trip and the first trip to me are almost identical. Great defensive rush, gets a blocker off balance, does a leg lift, yes. But for tripping, back there as a referee and an umpire, you're looking for something that is intentional something that is overt, a leg that is lifted, a leg that is whipped to create a trip. And in both of those, unfortunately, I don't think either one exists. So does intention matter, John, like in a crime? Is it really like, was he trying to trip somebody? Does that matter in you guys and your application of the rules? Well, the intentional part is what does that leg do? Is it intentionally lifted? Uh, In both of those cases, in fact, the second one, you could almost argue that the right knee of the defender contacts the right knee of the blocker, which forces the leg back rather than an overt trip with the bottom of the leg. Yeah, I'm telling you, like we I think we all common sense wise know what a trip looks like. And I think if that's tripping, what you're asking the offensive lineman in the NFL to do is plant their feet. That's not what they're supposed to do, right? They're supposed to shuffle, move their feet. And those guys are being driven backwards and kind of just being driven with the play in both cases, in Travis Frederick and Tyron Smith. So you're telling me you agree, bad calls. Yeah, unfortunately, I didn't like either one of them. And I think when they evaluate the film this week, Monday, Tuesday, regarding those games, based on 19 years in this league, based on 12 years of being back there, based on making that call, which I didn't make too many times, but when I did, there was no doubt there was an overt action which created a trip like at the playground when you're a kid you purposely try to trip somebody i don't think I, either one of those rose to that level john can i ask you this is just driven out of my own personal curiosity and watching these games i mean anyone that listens knows this i'm a cowboys fan and i'm willing to accept you see things through the lens of fandom from time to time but i brought this up earlier in the show tyron smith is generally regarded as one of the best offensive linemen in the league Um, not just in athleticism and size, but in technique. And I've never seen somebody with such a high reputation seemingly get such low-quality calls made against them. He, he, If I look at how often he's called for various infractions, be it tripping or holding, 
Tyron Smith, you would think, is a really not very good offensive lineman. Well, your Cowboys have a great reputation up front. Uh, They have, for year after year after year, put some big horses up there with great technique uh, to block for those guys back there. So I I see your point. Uh, Let me ask you this, John. Um, I heard Rex Ryan this morning. Again, we're talking to John Perry, ESPN's Monday Night Football rules analyst. Wait, 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 wait. wait. i got to follow that up. Does reputation factor in? I know we're talking about human beings, right? It's, It's men on the field. They're human beings. They have that yellow flag in their belt. Does the reputation factor in, whoa, that's Tyron Smith, or whoa, is that intentional grand? That's Tom Brady. He knows what he's doing. How much weight does reputation carry as you're making those, you know, in-the-moment calls? You know, we answer this question periodically. And let me tell you, as an official, you prep all week for formations, tendencies, what to prepare for on a Sunday afternoon. When the game kicks off, there are 22 players on the field. They are all numbers there are no names it's a quarterback 12 it's a quarterback nine it's a left guard 72 at that point in the game in the heat of the battle you're focused on position and number rather than name so the answer to that is absolutely not okay ESPN Monday Night Football Analyst Rules Analyst John Perry here on the Will Kane Show now let me get to this which Rex Ryan brought up this morning on Get Up he said the tripping specifically calls actually started earlier in the week he is suggesting that Bill Belichick would have sent tape in to Al Riveron. That would have been communicated down. Let's make sure we watch for this. And on game day, Belichick would have approached officiating crew and said, I hope we're all watching. This is going to go down. Do you think something like that might have come into play and influenced the officials? Well, that happens every week, every team, 32 teams across the board. You know, you, you get to the game site on Saturday as a crew. You prepare. Uh, you may or may not get a phone call from New York, specifically Al Riveron, to to let you know, hey, the head coach from X has called, and he, he just wanted to make sure that I mentioned to you to take a look at this. When we probably have already discussed it in our pregame. Sunday comes, there's conversations with both coaches, and yes, every coach will bring up something. Hey, make sure we're taking a look at this. Our receivers are getting grabbed off the line of scrimmage. They can't run their route. But I don't know in this case. I'd hate to speak to, to Coach Belichick or to New York to say, hey, they brought up, take a look at these Dallas linemen. They trip often. I've watched multiple Dallas games. I've yet to see one. You've yet to see one what? One trip? One trip. Wow. John Perry here on the Will Kane Show. One more thing I want to follow up on. So you talked about your your pregame meeting as officials. Um, you know, there's a hundred different actions, all of which are thousands of different actions on any given play taking place in an NFL game. And the officiating crew's job is to monitor all of it to see if anything's over the line, right? I, I'm curious how that plays in your pregame meeting. Like, you guys sit down and do what? Do you talk about this like, well, the Dolphins are often doing things like this throughout the season, so let's make sure we focus in that area. In other words, you said reputation doesn't matter, but you guys have a pregame meeting, so does track record matter? You walk into a meeting, you're like, well, this has been happening a lot with the Broncos, so let's make sure we focus or watch this one thing with them. Technology has taken the preparation for a football game to a totally different level. I remember 20 years ago, you'd set your VCR tape, hope it taped your game, uh, rather than some other show. Now the officials get a hard drive with every game that's played. So as a crew chief, after a Sunday football game, you travel home, you might get home at midnight. Monday, Tuesday, you break down the game that you just worked. Starting late Tuesday afternoon into Wednesday, Thursday, you're watching both teams that you're about to officiate at least the last week. But if you see some tendencies, you might even go deeper in a week mm. previous or beyond. In a Saturday pregame, it's very normal to probably watch 20 to 30 plays from each team, offense, defense, special teams. And we're not looking, they're not looking for one specific player. It's formations, tendencies, mechanically, how will we officiate both teams on Sunday? Their preparation is probably 10 hours for every hour of football that they officiate. Well, that's fascinating, John. Thanks for that insight. Uh, and I appreciate you telling us about the background behind tripping. Uh, love having you on the show today. Thank you, John. Have a good game tonight. All right. Have a great day. All right. It's ESPN Monday Football Rules Analyst John Perry here on the Will Kane Show.
That's pretty fascinating to think about how maybe not reputation, but clearly track record plays in. What are you showing a tendency of? What are you constantly walking the line on? And yes, where can a coach lobby and influence what goes in on Sunday? All right, coming up, throw out all the stats. I don't want to hear it. The weather dictated everything on Sunday. That's next on the Will Kane Show. Brought to you by Capital One. You know how it feels when you've saved enough for that long-awaited edition? Now, imagine saving enough for an edition on that edition. That's the feeling with Capital One, where a new savings account earns five times the national average. Capital One is helping you earn more towards your savings goals. This is banking reimagined. What's in your wallet? Capital One NA, member FDIC. I don't think Tom Brady's over the cliff, and I don't think anything yesterday would make you think so. I don't think Dak Prescott showed he can't win the big game. I don't think Russell Wilson shows he's not the MVP. And I don't think Carson Wentz should be a regret for the Philadelphia Eagles. I think there was some awful, awful weather yesterday that meant run the ball. I'm going to run the weather by one of our NFL quarterbacks here at ESPN, a guy who said, don't bellyache about the rain. Hey, if you missed our interview today with rules analyst John Perry, and while the refs are tripping, Go check out the entire interview on demand the Will Came podcast brought to you by Capital One. Capital One is reimagining banking, offering accounts with no fees or minimums that can be opened in five minutes. Capital One, what's in your wallet? Capital One in a member FDIC. But let me get to the Shell Pinzo performance line for a moment. Patrick in Texas, what's up, man? How's it going, Will? Thanks for having me on. Uh, I wanted to talk about uh, Jason Garrett getting fired. Hashtag Mm -hmm. fire the clapper. Um, the whole thing is you're talking about how the it was a bad weather game, and I think we should have ran the ball 30 times. I mean, we paid Zeke all this money. Why couldn't we run the ball at least 30 times? I think that was the recipe. You know, Patrick, why when Zeke is averaging like six yards a carry on a drive, remember the one drive, they didn't even swap out personnel. They didn't even bring Amari Cooper in. They telegraphed to the Patriots. We're going to run it over and over and over again. And they did, and Zeke could not be stopped. Why when it got to third and two? Just like in the Vikings game, only in reverse. In the Vikings game, they couldn't stop the pass. And then when it got to a crucial play, oh, let's run it. In this one, the Patriots couldn't stop the run. And then when it got to third and two, what, is, what do the Cowboys do? They pass it. It's like, just, just take what's working. Bank it, man. So Patrick wants to fire Jason Garrett. And everybody's Appreciate talking about this uh, tripping call. It should have never been to that. We should have just ran the ball, moved the chains, and we were there. You know, because everybody, like, I had a big debate between me and my friends on that fourth down the, the, when we were about to score, when we were at the 11. Yeah. Uh, and I was okay with kicking the field goal there. Uh, a lot of people were like, let's go for it. But I was okay with kicking the field goal, getting the ball back, and just run the ball. And I think we were there. I think the, we were there at the end, and... It yeah, just yeah. shows how how indecisive Jason Garrett is again. And I think it's time for Chris Richard to step up. Uh, today, fire the clapper. Hashtag fire the clapper. Let's get rid of him. It's time. Even well, Jerry knows. Too. Jerry called yeah. him out. I, he's not going to make it. We all know he's not going to make it. Why not change the tone today? Let's change the yeah. tone. I'm you, I'm not I'm out on that. Thanks for the call, Patrick. Because I don't I don't I don't I want I don't want to box anyone in to getting the job now. But here's the good thing about firing Jason today. Nuno, the Giants could get a jump on hiring Garrett if they fire him today. That means he could probably be the coach of the Giants within a couple weeks. This is beyond ridiculous. Like yeah, it's just to have these rumors out there. Like it has to be where he felt like, hey, let me put some pressure on on Jerry Jones to be like, I have a market. You don't, bro. Like, if the Giants hire this dude, I swear I will find another team to root for. And I'm willing to, like, find a a crappy team to root for. Like, I'm not going to start. You already got one. I do, but I wouldn't be like, oh, I'm going to root for the Patriots because I know that eventually they're going to they're not going to be good. But, like, I would be like. What, what would about be, Jason Garrett? It makes you think that you're all of a sudden better than Jason Garrett. Your last two right. coaches are Pat Shermer and Ben McAdoo. Jason Garrett would be an unbelievable upgrade over what you've had. Listen. You should be running right now and happened. hoping you get this Jason Garrett. This is what's Garrett. happened, right? The, Gi- the Giants have gained a little weight because they were in a great relationship with Tom Coughlin. They got comfortable. They gained a little weight. They still haven't gotten it completely off. So they've dated some, you know, 
They Some did. Twos. <laughs> I was going to say twos. That's yeah, and Jason Garrett would be <laughs> a massive all upgrade. All of a sudden, like, uh, now you start to feel better. Like, I feel like I can date an eight or no, nine. No, no, And Nuno. that's not, yes. Bubba has a point. Why do you think you're above Jason Garrett? You've been slumming with twos with Pat Schirmer All Jason and Garrett McAdoo. does is beat the Giants. And, and he's... And let's say Jason Garrett's a four or five, right? He's a four or five. That's a big upgrade okay, for what you've That's been double what right, you've got. Listen, we started working out. We're feeling better. We've lost a little weight. Even though I haven't. I don't think so. Like, and all of a sudden you're like, I know that I'm worth at least an eight. You're not though. That's but I am. Problem. And that's, that's why you keep ending up with twos. Cause you think you should get an eight. And so you keep ending up with twos. Maybe you should just grab a four. And luckily the Cowboys have a four to give you. You can have he can go to Washington and coach that team. I can't wait for him to be on the sidelines at MetLife next year. I can't either. Be the Giants head coach. Robert in Vegas, you're on the Will Kane Show. Will Kane, do you believe in fate? Robert, you're back. <laughs> it took me a minute. Hey, man, um, you're big time, aren't you? You and your band, you're pretty big time. We don't. I told Bubba to start putting you into rotation when you call in. We need a little... Escape the fate coming in and out, right? Yeah, yeah, I guess. I mean, semi popular <laughs> in some respects. But listen, man, I, I'm going to have to put a lifetime ban on the entertainment personality power rankings for Will Kane. Because Why? You, you claim to have a monopoly on the truth. You also claim that you'd be playing the accountability bowl. But all I've yes. heard is excuses, man. Look, you know how many bad calls it did against the Niners? It was third and 35. And with Aaron Rodgers there. And they gave him a first down. But you know what they did? They smashed him and destroyed him. Robert, you Robert, know what the what Cowboys did? They lost. What do you want me to do to take account today? How do I, how do I, how should I be accountable? What should I do? Here's, here's what you got to do. First of all, you got to realize that you're too involved. That's the problem with all Cowboys fans. They're so close to the picture that they're only seeing the fine details. You need to take mm-hmm. a step back and see the big picture. And in the big picture, your team is cursed. And like Get you're looking up close and you're seeing, oh, the ginger coach is there's an issue. Robert. They're like, it's Robert. that's gotta be him. No, no, it's because it's got it's the weather. No, it's it's the tripping call. Dude, just take a step back and realize that the owner, Jerry Jones, is the epitome of all Dallas Cowboy fans. He's delusional. All right, all right. <laughs> Hold on. Now, Robert, what, what, what's your genre? Is it death metal? What is it? What is, the, what is Escape the Fate? <laughs> no, I'm not that cool, man. That'd be, that'd be dope if we were death metal. What is, uh, no, mean? it's it's like hard rock. It's I mean, it's, it's what we call emo, you oh. know? It's, we, oh, yeah? We complain That's a lot. How I feel today. Oh, good. Perfect for me today, right? <laughs> I yeah, need some perfect. emo complaining. All right, I'm going to get some Escape the Fate. If, you, if I don't have it already, please send some over to Bubba. I got to go because Tim Hasselbeck's jumping on. I always love having you on, Robert. Uh, Tim Hasselbeck, what's it like to throw the ball in the rain? He loves it, I hear. Next on The Will Kane Show. The Will Kane Show is everywhere you are. On your radio, your computer, your phone, or just tell your smart speaker, play ESPN Radio. More Will Kane coming up. Your home is important. That's why GEICO helps make it easy to save on homeowner's insurance. Because home is more than just a place. Home is where you curl up on the couch in a fetal position and cry at cheesy movies, even though you've seen them a thousand times and have all the lines memorized. You and and me, and also also you you with me, me. and And you and and I. I. The GEICO Insurance Agency could help protect the tear-filled comfort zone you call home. Call GEICO and see how easy it is to switch and save on homeowner's insurance. Triumph of weather yesterday, but one person I know that is not sympathetic to that is ESPN football analyst Tim Hasselbeck, who's on the Shell Pinzo Performance Line. What's up, Tim? Hey, Will. So, By the um, way, why should, why should I be sympathetic to guys playing in, in cold weather outside if you play an outdoor sport? It's not cold that I'm talking about. I mean, I actually heard this through the grapevine, but I think I've talked to you about it on the air. I think you're fairly unsympathetic to throwing the football in the rain. I'm just here to tell you this, man. When this many quarterbacks, Brady, Prescott, Wilson, 
Wentz all have off days together at the same time. I'm looking around going, huh, maybe it's the driving rain. Oh, listen, the weather can definitely, you know, impact you. But, you know, everybody that is playing in that game has to play in it. And I'd be the first one to tell you, I I was terrible once that ball, you know, was wet. Um, You know, there are other guys. Take my brother, for example, played in Seattle for 12 years. You know, he, for whatever reason, you know, really didn't affect him. He was a, you know, a good wet ball thrower. Um, And... Look, I, I think that you know it, it, it can affect the game, but both teams playing in the game are affected by it. What would make someone a good wet ball thrower? Like bigger hands? Well, I think hands? if you have huge hands, if you have huge hands, or it just you know depending on how you grip the football. Um, I mean, you know, both of those things end up being a factor, as well as you know your ability to and your propensity to to throw a tight spiral when it's windy, you know, is better than if you throw a ball that's typically loose because what happens is in the the wind, you know, it can just unravel it quicker versus, you know, it cut through it if if you end up throwing kind of a, you know, a prettier ball. Yeah, so when I look at all those games, man, I'm I'm like, are we really going to talk about Tom Brady, you know, finally showing us he's over the cliff yesterday? Are we really going to use that and go, see, I told you Dak couldn't beat good teams? Or Russell Wilson, he's falling behind in the MVP race. Just like, man, those games, every single one of them, especially Cowboys Patriots, to me just screamed out, A, the better coach is going to win because he's going to do all the little things, and B, hand the ball off over and over and over again. I think that's what dictated the outcomes. Well, I mean, Zeke had 21 carries. Um, you know, it's not enough. Ball ran a little enough. bit as ran a little bit as. I mean, it's not enough. You have the ball it, down four with three timeouts with 2:38 left in the game and uh, the two minute warning, and you've been the best offense in football. Like, like you have a chance. Like you, you have a really good chance. I think a lot of people would sign up for that chance. To me, I, I think the game, you know, in many respects, is it seemed like some of these Cowboys players didn't want to be in these elements that you're talking about. Honestly, they probably sounded like you complaining about these elements. Like, oh, we got to go out there and it's going to be wet and cold and windy. Because, you know, Jason Witten's got his hands. Randall Cobb drops one. Dak airmails, you know, Cobb when he's wide open on a third and two. Um, you know, you got guys having a hard time fielding kickoffs. I mean, to me, you know, it was like the players didn't realize that they were going to be out there and have to compete in those elements. That's on the players. In pro football, Mm. that is on the players. Okay, so this is good. So, hey, let me tell you something. Among the people out there beating the drum for Jason Garrett's pink slip, I'm not even among the top five today because I feel like I've done that for two years, meaning that argument's been made. But obviously everybody else is out there today, so this is good. So is it Tim Hasselbeck against the world today? Jason Garrett was just fine? Well, I would say this. I would say that his players um, were put in position to have success. And and on, oftentimes Tim. they didn't deliver. What's that? Come on. Okay, let me go through. Uh, let's those, just those, do two. Take, third, take, take the third down, for example. Yeah. Take those third down, yeah. for example. Yes. Like, all he can do is, is hire a coordinator that will design plays and call them to get guys over. No, he like, can't. No, what, what do you mean? Oh, it and guys got to throw it. That's all he can do? Then why is he wearing a headset? How about, hey, No, but that's what I'm saying. That's Zeke. all he can do as a coach. As a coach, that's the best you can do. Like, the best you can do is have a guy to block Matthew Slater on the punt team. And when he doesn't do it, like, that's the player. Okay, Tim, like, I'm not now saying listen. the guy's perfect, Will, but, but, like, the idea that he should be fired, just because Jerry Jones is so, so unhappy with the coaching, doesn't mean he's right. But Tim, if you Tim. Said that, if you would have said that after the Jets game, I'd have agreed with him. But, like, well, I said it, here's I said the it after go the Titans on the road game against a year New England, ago. You go on the road against New England. You have the football with 238, I think it was. Three timeouts, a two-minute warning. Like, Okay, hold on, it, hold on. You're be, I get it. They're in a position to win. They're in a position to beat the yeah, best team are. in the league, potentially, or at least the best defense in the league, potentially. And they're in that moment. But the problem is they should never have been behind at that moment. Now, listen, I want you to hear me for a second. What, well, tell you, me what he should have done differently. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you. Yeah. But you got to hear me out. You 
are getting a little stubborn, I think. You are in a process, which you and I in our relationship is going back over a year now, of dismissing an accumulation of individual instances. I'll give you two in this game, which one of you've already dismissed. The third and two. Okay, he chose to throw the ball. Or you're suggesting Kellen Moore did. And that's what he's hired Kellen Moore to do. Zeke was averaging like six yards a carry on that drive, could not be stopped. How about getting into the headset, just like a couple weeks ago when we talked about the Vikings and going, hey, let's stick with what's worked. Let's just keep running Zeke. That's one. The second is, how about the special teams, which was awful from start to finish, but was most pronounced on that that kickoff that was a short kick that no Cowboys player seemed prepared to realize, hey, we have to field that kick. That's coaching, man. Yeah. Well, listen, right, and, and the, the the coaching point, which everybody knows, doesn't need to be stated, is when the ball is kicked short, the up guy catches it. He feels it. That's what he does. Like, and, and, and the returner, didn't. who, by the way, yeah, again, and, and right, and maybe they've seen new players in those positions. I guess what no. I'd say is. <laughs> so, you think, so, so you think that that is 100% on the head coach. I think this, Tim, if I can come up with over the last couple of years, dozens upon dozens of individual instances, and you keep going back to the offensive coordinator or in, 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 in no, different you're, here's instances, the, deal with the, the special, hold on, hold on, you the special love teams the coordinator. coordinator when he, you want to love the offensive coordinator when he's calling good plays, but then when it, his plays don't work out, you want Jason Garrett, you know, sitting on his shoulder telling him that that's the wrong play call. Like, do you want the guy to call the plays or not? I would be honest with you. I would never be an offensive coordinator for a head coach that was going to be sitting on my shoulder telling me what to do. So if you want to play call, you got to let him call Sitting on your shoulder is different. Sitting on your shoulder is different than getting into the headset and going, how about not right here? By the way, what about the special teams coordinator? That's the point. If I can point to three different guys under you that are a problem, maybe you're the problem. The reality is, is on the kickoff, okay? You have guys in position to catch them, not catching them well. Well, go back and watch them. Like the two that hit the first two that hit the ground, there are guys in position to catch them. On third down, you can gripe all you want about, oh, we should have run it. When you call a play and a guy is open, and all you need to do is hit him with the football, that's not a bad play call. I don't care what you think the run maybe would have done. It's not a bad play call. I'm not again. Listen, I'm not saying he's a perfect coach. I just think that like the the this is Jason Garrett's fault because you know they picked the field. Are you on the same fraternity? Four left on fourth and seven, but they do like there's so many people banging that drum. And the truth is, by kicking the field goal, it worked out exactly the way that he wanted it to work out, which is ball back, all your timeouts, and the two minute warning. Like. Well, I didn't, you know, I didn't some, hate that as much as everybody else. But I will say this, when you're on the 10-yard line. And by the way, line, by the way t- Will, in, in, in defense of Garrett a little bit as well, you know, he's got a <laughs> third and one, which you want to run the football on, where he completes a pass to, to Zeke. So you're right around the, the minus 40-yard line, again, with all of your timeouts still, and, you know, and you're, you've got a chance to be rolling here a little bit, and then they get the bogus tripping, you know, foul. Yeah, you're going to be getting it is bogus, that's for sure. You're going to get a wonderful fruitcake from the Garrett family come Christmas time. I mean, by the way, if he invited you over for Thanksgiving, would you go? I mean, would you go? That's a really good question. I don't think it would be a warm, fuzzy Thanksgiving dinner, even if I was a perfect gentleman, which I would be. I I think you don't. You don't think he would he would be nice and you know you'd enjoy it with a Garrett. No, but at this point, like, I'm I think you guys would get along a lot better than you think. I mean, I was trying to come up with like a water polo analogy for you to make go. it so you could understand it. But <laughs> I think that with your water polo background and his Ivy background, like, uh-huh. I think you guys, like, BFF. Well, look at this. We were both backups, so I know where one of us is failing. Yes, exactly right. <laughs> right. All right, I got to go. I went way over commercial break. All right, man. I'll uh, see you. See you, man. It's Tim Hasselbeck here on the Will Kane Show. I can't believe Tim's appetite for defending Jason Garrett. It's out of control. Haiti, I think the Rams have given a do-over on Jared Goff. Mm, they may not pay him. With the Eagles, with Wentz, next on the Will Kane Show. Are you still wearing your button-downs untucked and hoping for the best? Then stop it. Seriously? Seriously. Because traditional shirts weren't meant to be worn untucked. And honestly, it shows. 
Untuck It believes in helping guys look sharp and feel casual. That's why their shirts fall at the perfect length and were designed for guys of all shapes and sizes. Tall or short, slim or athletic build, Untuck It has the perfect fit. Because everyone deserves a shirt that looks great. Untucked. And you shouldn't have to go to a tailor to get one. With Untuck It's huge variety of colors and patterns, you're sure to find the style to match any wardrobe. So whether you're shopping for the perfect gift for the man in your life this holiday season, or just trying to craft a look that's as relaxed as it is smart, you need to check out Untuck It. Get free shipping and returns on all orders in the U.S. at UntuckIt.com. And don't forget to use promo code ROS to save 20% on your first order at checkout. That's U-N-T-U-C-K-I-T dot com, promo code ROS. It's an accountability Monday. It's the Will Kane Show on ESPN Radio presented by Progressive Insurance. Small business protection just got easier. With more than 30 coverage options available, Progressive has you covered. More at ProgressiveCommercial.com. There's someone suggesting I'm not taking accountability. I'm putting it off on the refs. I'm putting it on Jason Garrett. Well, that's correct. But I also won my bet with Sports Center anchor Kevin Winter. We put a little accountability on that Cowboys Patriots game. We said the loser has to eat two year old gefilte fish. Luckily, I got six and a half points, which means I won't be eating the gefilte fish, but Kevin Winter will. We'll be doing that sometime later, not today, perhaps later this week on the Will Kane Show. I asked you earlier, what are you afraid of in the NFC? The answer is the San Francisco 49ers defensive line. What are you afraid of in the AFC? Truly afraid of not being able to stop, truly dominating. 888-729-3776. Let me go to the Shell Pinzo performance line. Jimmy in North Carolina, what's up? Me now. Hello? Hey, hey, what's up, Jimmy? Hey, what's up, Will? How you doing? Um, uh... Sometimes I'm happy, sometimes I'm not, but uh, I'm the Will Kane of Greensboro, North Carolina. Uh, you, because what's I, that mean? Yeah, I, 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 my family, everybody, friends, they get mad because I seek the truth. That's all. I'm a philosophy pre-law major at UNCG, and I always mm-hmm. seek the truth. And mm-hmm. I get I get ridiculed all the time for it. But <laughs> I need, I mean, all the time. But uh, I, I need so, to know your opinion on something. All right. Okay, from one truth teller to uh, another. Okay, I, I'm I'm the biggest cowboy fan in North Carolina, so uh, I I do I don't want to be a homer, but I need to ask you, Dak Prescott. I've noticed he hasn't had a contract. I watch every game this year. He hasn't ran the ball when there's room to run. Three or four times he could have ran and got the extra yard. Do you feel that that's because he hasn't had a contract yet? Um, and you can tell me because I, I accept when I'm really off or when I'm wrong. You tell me if I'm way off and I don't know what I'm talking about. No, here's the thing. I think he executes the play as called. I think he makes the right play. I appreciate the call, man. I'm going to tell you. I think that he would rather execute the play as designed, as drawn up, and win with his arm. I agree with you. He should run more. Specifically in this game, on that, what was it? Was that third and seven at about the 10 or 11 yard line? He ended up throwing it to Blake Jarwin in the back of the end zone. He only had to beat a defensive tackle and he could have run the ball, possibly into the end zone, definitely for a first down. He needs to trust his legs a little more. Understand they're a backup option, but trust his legs a little more. Ronnie in Texas, you think Hasselback was right, Ronnie? Hey, man. Uh, yeah, I do. I've got got a couple of opinions on that too so i i used to referee football i used to be a coach and now i'm a scientist so i look at things a whole lot different than most people but Mm -hmm. the players in a professional level they were not prepared mentally to play in that weather yesterday it doesn't matter what the coaches do or say if the players aren't ready to make adjustments for the weather Whatever the weather situation is, that is totally on them. Too many drops, uh, et Ronnie, cetera, et cetera. Why, why year after year, why do the Patriots pre- appear to be more prepared for every single outcome, every single situation? Why are they more prepared? And from my coaching standpoint, they are scared to death of Belichick, and I believe in negative reinforcement. And what Garrett so, could have done or should have done was getting that – ass, if I can say that, 
I mean, that if you're scared of your But Ronnie, coach, Ronnie, Ronnie, hold on. So you're, you're telling me good coaching can get you prepared, even if by fear. Belichick gets his team prepared, yes? Uh, agreed. Okay, then that it stands to reason, I appreciate the call, Ronnie, if a good coach can get a team prepared for bad conditions, a bad coach could fail to get his team prepared for bad conditions. If there is such thing as a good coach, that means there's such thing as a bad coach. The Voice of Monday Night Football, next on the Wilson.